Hi and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. Today we've got the Samsung Galaxy Tab A8, the 2022 model. So I've reviewed the 2019 model. Um, I've reviewed the 2018 model as well. There was a bit of a gap in the A8 reviews, but I've got the 2022 model in here. I'm hoping there is a 2023 model coming out as well, which hopefully I will be able to review as well. But yeah, hey ho. So let's start with the overview of the device itself. So on the very top over here, we've got the power button, which also doubles up as a call it a action button. Volume up, volume down, the microphone. To the side, we've got two speakers on the left. And then on the right, we've got additional two speakers and a Type-C charging point. And then on the very bottom, we have the um memory card slot now you can get the the tab with the sim card slot as well which also goes in here um so you do get the memory card and the sim card this is a wi-fi only model uh which is 32 gig and retails for about 219 pounds here in uk and then we have the front facing camera which also is used to unlock the device and then we've got the bike facing camera as well over here. If you plan on taking any pictures or videos with the device itself. Right then, uh, let's have a look at what's in store for us. Let's see what we are running on and uh, what uh, where can we get with it. So let's have a look then. Let's start with about tab software information so we are running on one ui 5.1 android version 13 google play system update november 2022 so that's where we are at and android security patch level 1st of july 2023 which is to be honest uh, the most recent you can really get so device care so when it comes to storage 32 gigs of internal storage expandable via memory cards uh, up to 512 gigs um, in terms of RAM, 3 gigs, which, I mean, it's 2023, it's a 2022 model. It's a bit scarce, if you ask me, um, when it comes to RAM. And you can kind of see that with the device itself. Yes, I know, I understand the price point of the device being obviously £219, but still 3 gigabytes of RAM isn't the greatest. However, One UI has been enhanced since the TouchWiz experience. You know, the experience is decent. It's just three gigs of RAM. Come on, Samsung, you can do better than that. Advanced features. Now that's where it gets a bit more interesting. So you've got multi-window for all apps. So that forces apps, even if they cannot be run in multi-window, to run in multi-window. Full screen in split view, screen view, which means that the bar on the bottom um, is not shown. So I'll show you the bar on the bottom, which is in here. So we've got this nice little uh, dock on the bottom. It's not Samsung DeX, unfortunately, and you don't have DeX built in on the device, but you do get this nice um, dock on the bottom, which I'll focus on um, later on. Uh, show multi-window menu with one window, swipe for pop-up view. So what it means, it means that you can, for example, slide it like that. And then you've got a slightly smaller screen. And then swipe for split, split screen. So you can use two fingers to swipe up and it goes into split screen mode. But to be honest, if you plan on using split screen, I would just use an edge panel and basically just um, slide the app like that which in my opinion does a slightly better job than those uh, fingers and on top of that you can obviously use the bottom dock as well so you can do that as well uh, with dragging the apps so you can go in the middle and open a window so for example so let's say you've got your settings open and then you want to open let's say a calendar you can open that as well in the middle um, so hey ho, if you want to, you can go to split screen view as well with the calendar. Uh, you can make it slightly smaller. So there's just an icon that you can just tap and then it goes into um, expanded mode and then you can expand it to the whole screen if you want to as well. So hey ho, I mean, to be honest, the multitasking game, um, in my opinion, Samsung is really a king of, 
of uh, multitasking on the Android devices. It doesn't matter if it's a Galaxy Fold uh, for £1,800, if it's a Samsung Tab S9 for um, £900 or £800, or it's, if it's a A8 2022 for £200, the multitasking game is really strong when it comes to the actual multitasking. But obviously the performance with 3 gigs, you can't expect that much. Uh, so you do get a bit of a jagginess here and there, but hey-ho, it works. Um, in terms of security and privacy, so you've got biometrics, um, lock screen, so you've got a screen lock, well, um, biometric security, here we go. So face recognition, you've got a face recognition, you've got a pin code, you've got a pattern. So in terms of face recognition, let's have a look how fast does it work. Pretty fast, in my opinion. Um, so lock screen type, where you can change if you want to add widgets or if you want to keep it like that. Uh, obviously, how you want to lock your phone. Uh, sorry, lock phone your tab. Uh, home screen, literally just your home screen layout. Wallpaper and style, that's pretty much self-explanatory. So obviously, you can change the wallpapers and the color palette as well. So you've got different color palettes if you want to change that. So for example, if you go to that, it changes your notification icons and stuff like that. But we're going to leave it as this. Display, you've got the light mode and the dark mode. So dark mode obviously looks like that. Light mode looks like that. I've got the dark mode set to uh, kick in when there is a sunset. Uh, you've got the adaptive brightness, but I switched it off for the purpose of the review because it uh, messes up my um, exposure. Uh, eye comfort shield. So basically what it does is if we turn it on just like that, uh, set schedule, always on. So basically removes, uh, keep, your, keep your eyes comfortable by limiting the blue light and using the warmer colors, which is really handy, uh, especially in the evening. Again, I've got it set to uh, sunset to sunrise. Uh, screen timeout, obviously font size and style. And edge panels, that's the bit I've got in here. So that's where you get your edge panels. If you want to, you can pin them down so they never change. If you don't, then uh, it's going to show the recent apps. Obviously, if you want um, more apps, you just press this button over here. And then every single app you've got installed you can basically set it up. I haven't got Spotify set up, so I don't think it's going to work. I use YouTube Music anyway. But yeah, hey ho. Uh, yeah. Let's scrap that. Okay, navigation bar. So we've got two options. You can either do swipe gestures like I have in here, or you can set it up the good old Android way with Recents, Home, and Back Button. Um, and like I did say, You've got this taskbar in here as well. So if you press and hold, it vanishes. If you press and hold again, it comes up, uh, comes back up. So that's that. Okay, and then notifications, again, pretty much self-explanatory sound. So that's where you've got the sound quality and effects. So you can use Dolby Atmos or in auto mode, movie mode, music or voice. And I leave it in auto. Um, modes and routines. So that used to be called Bixby routines. Now it's called modes and routines. So for example, what you can do is you can, for example, uh, set it up that when you go to sleep, um, it changes your notification sound. So you can set up which days and so on. Pretty handy. Uh, connected devices, so for example, if you've got the Galaxy Buds uh, 2 Pro or Pro 1 or any Buds really, uh, it can auto switch between your phone, your Samsung phone, your Samsung laptop and your Samsung tablet. Quick share, which allows you to quickly share stuff between your phone and your tablet. Call text on other devices, so you can receive phone calls on this phone, when you've got uh, on this tablet, I keep calling it a phone. On this tablet, uh, when you've got your phone connected to this tab, so your calls and text messages will come on the cab, uh, tab, not cab, definitely not a cab. So continue apps on other devices, so that Samsung Notes, Samsung um, Internet. So for example, you start browsing on your phone, and then you want to carry on on your tab. Basically, what it does is that. 
Everything you've got open on your phone, on your Samsung internet browser will be open in here as well. Smart view, so if you've got a smart telly, uh, it doesn't have to be a Samsung telly. Um, I've got an LG C1 and it works fine. You can show your tablet on a TV. And that's pretty much it. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, tethering. So obviously this is not the device that has a SIM card, but if you've got a SIM card in it, uh, you can use it to tether. Right then. So that's that covered. Uh, the tab itself runs pretty well, to be honest. Uh, the battery life is pretty decent, I have to admit. Um, so in terms of screen on time, I do get about, well, obviously, depending on what you use, I do get about eight hours. That's a mix of watching movies, uh, cloud gaming via Xbox Game Pass, uh sadly stadia is not here anymore with us uh and some browsing uh the display itself unfortunately it's not an oled panel but that's not something you'd expect uh in this price range but it is decent enough um it's actually quite bright as well I'm just going to show you a picture of how it looks um outside and then when it comes to the actual performance, like I said, it's three gigs of RAM. So it's not that bad, but the sooner you start doing a couple of things, um, let's say we open this and that, it's, it's not instantaneous, um, but it does work. Okay, so in terms of office use, as you know, I've got my trusty Zag Keys keyboard which unfortunately cannot be purchased anymore. Uh, but I usually use it with my tab review. So that's a standard Bluetooth keyboard that has this nice uh, bit over here that allows you to adjust the uh, screen. And then I use the uh, Logitech MX Master 2S Bluetooth mouse. So let's do that. So with my trusty keyboard connected and my mouse paired as it is with Android devices, um, you can obviously use it to your liking. These are some really bizarre um, adverts, but yeah, you've got your cursor. If you can see it on the white background, you've got your cursor. But obviously, apart from browsing internet um, as it is, um, obviously you can use it as as, as a normal. That's that, and then uh let's open microsoft office that is microsoft office opened as you know you can use it just like um actually you know what let's do something slightly different let's close that let's create a new document so let's do word let's create from template let's say you want to prepare your cv let's go for this newsletter you can basically use it as a tab, well, tab, a laptop replacement as such for your office work. So OP24, P54, voila. Simple as that. Where we are with the battery. Yep. So, yeah, pretty much a laptop replacement. Um, you can obviously take notes, uh, which, works, which works quite handy. I haven't found a dedicated Samsung keyboard for this one. So I'm using my trusty Zag Keys cover keyboard, which is now seven years old. I don't think they manufacture them anymore, which is a bit of a shame really, because it would do with as a really nice laptop replacement. For example, I've got a Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360, which in terms of office use lasts about two and a half hours, where this easily lasts about nine hours of office work. So yeah, it would be nice if you could if they could get us a decent keyboard, but hey ho. Um, so that's that when it comes to some light office work. And then when it comes to gaming, use Minecraft purely because it's quite CPU heavy. So it always tells you how good the CPU is uh, when it comes to handling Minecraft. I've just spawned on a tree, don't know why, but hey ho. Okay, you know what? let's increase the brightness slightly. There we go. Right. Yeah, so the experience is actually quite good. Yes, the video is actually recorded in 30 frames per second, but the game does actually run in 60 frames per second, which is which is always nice. 
I believe there's quite a few there's been quite a few updates to Minecraft as well. You can definitely see that the inventory didn't look like that. Inventory. And um, so that's that's actually pretty well. For a device with three gigs of RAM in 2023. Yes, I said that again because <laughs> yeah, let's let's be honest. Uh three gigs is not the best. Like I said, it's decent for when you're using it for mainly browsing and internet and some very light gaming. But, but anyway, yeah, so that's the story with running the games natively. And now when it comes to Xbox Game Pass, which obviously allows you to play a bit more demanding games via internet. Okay, so what do we fancy today? Mass Effect Legendary Edition? No, not really. Oh, they've added Conan Exiles. That's, that's interesting. Okay, let's have a look. Um, Forza Horizon, GTA 5. What do you fancy? Uh, you know what? Uh, let's have a look. Fallout 76. Oh, I love Fallout 76. But hey, oh, you know what? Let's try with Forza Horizon. Okay, so let's have a look. Look at the Supra. Jesus Christ, yep, yeah, that went well. That went really well. That looks like a really sopped up Supra, which is really hard to handle. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so where am I actually going? Oh, to the left, okay. This is working well. Yeah, but you get the gist of it. Um, so, new content awarded. Oh, that's nice. Car voucher, clothing voucher. Oh, okay. That's well nice. New cars to collect. Nice. Yeah, I'll have a look later on. But yeah, that's pretty much the experience you get with the cloud gaming, which works quite well. So yeah, overall, it's a pretty decent device for the price itself. So yeah, thanks for watching another episode of Quick Expert Reviews, and I'll speak to you soon.